It's well known that Wilberforce wrote in his journal, Sunday 28th October 1787, God Almighty has set before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the reformation of manners. Wilberforce's initial hopes to achieve the end of the slave trade were dashed. Uh, it became clear he was going to have a long and tedious and taxing fight on his hands. It took 20 years. And Wilberforce suffered perhaps the greatest setbacks, the greatest personal crises he'd ever known during that 20-year fight. He got down about life, he got despondent and despairing. Did Wilberforce know at the beginning of his, of his uh, campaign for the abolition of the slave trade and that it would take him 20 years? And he suffers what appears to have been his second nervous breakdown. Mentally, he was distraught. Physically, his health broke. He had been in the fight for nine years trying to end the slave trade. He was devastated. Images of slaves in chains, in bondage, the horrors of the Middle Passage ran through his mind. He couldn't sleep. We can still look at William Wilberforce, not just as a symbol, but as a human being who made a contribution because we know where his heart was. And Wilberforce stands for me as one of those people who was not afraid of what he meant, of the culture in which he was set. He would often cite the verse from the Old Testament book of Micah. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. These pillars of belief were what strengthened him, or what fired his passionate pursuit of social justice. Wilberforce's moral authority, although it was something without precedent, it became something that ennobled the British nation, called them to use Lincoln's phrase to remember the better angels of their nature. Wilberforce's power, the power of his personality, the power of his principles, helped change British life, and one cannot lay enough stress upon that.